Shall I start? Okay. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Jordan, the creator of Flowchain. Uh, today, my pre presentation will be about a whole new idea about the IoT blockchain. So, I wish to speak uh, slower and in a simple sentence. Uh, try to make it easy to understand and ho also hope to gather feedback from all of you. So the Flowchain project is an open source hybrid blockchain for the IoT. So uh, let me give you about five minutes introduction about the Flowchain. So the project is simple. It's an IoT blockchain for the hardware. And the, the first application of Flowchain is AI. Maybe I can show the a uh, demo in a bit later. So uh, as a whole new project, I mean the project was denied from the ground up. So it's basically we should have uh, reviewed papers and open source projects. And especially the project is denied for the hardware, uh, meaning that the flow chain, it's a type of embedded system. Or Operating system for IoT devices. And the project is in uh, open technologies, means that we use open source license, licenses um, such as MIT, BSD. Uh, we don't have any GPL in the source tree. So it's better for startups and companies to use the flow chain in their products. And especially the whole architecture is ignited with old open standards. And we use the web technologies such as REST API, JSON objects, and JSON databases such as uh, Label Up, Label DB, and MongoDB. And in, uh, instantly, the source tree is all in JavaScript. Um, I want to uh, ask you a question about uh, this issue. Did you know why Flowchain uh, was implemented in JavaScript? Uh, the idea is the red. A fraudulent application, a server runs on a variety range of the hardware devices uh, from a high, a high performance device uh, such as the cloud servers and your to a resource constrained devices. Uh, so you can see the figure. The figure shows that the Fortune framework uses a Node.js JavaScript runtime for high performance devices, um, while you use the JavaScript for resource constrained devices. Uh, it, it means that you don't have to modify the code uh, to run Fortune on different hardware devices. So, uh, the blockchain system has its own architecture and consensus algorithms. Some details can be found in this uh, reviewed papers. So the source code has already hosted on GitHub. There are so many repositories. You can check it out later. So let me put a summary. So although there are already blockchains built for fintech insurance, uh, peer to peer payments and cryptocurrencies, uh, there are still no blockchains uh, denied specific for hardware. So for chain is a blockchain technology uh, denied for label for IoT hardware with uh, several features, but the overall idea is the then the distributed autonomous machines. So, 
I didn't use the word organization. Uh, it's because for the blockchains, I think all of the things is about data. How to generate trusted data with facts uh, for, uh, for AI systems, such as the AI systems. Uh, it's a significant future from the beginning of, uh, of blockchain. And te uh, technically, blockchain is a private blockchain system uh, for your needs. I will explain the, what's a blockchain, private blockchain and public blockchain in the bit later. So open source is nature. If we want to build a decentralized system, uh, it's because decentralized is impossible if we use the proprietary software. And if we have to use trusted third parties to exchange private data, the decentralized model is also impossible. So as we know, this scenario is called uh, trustless computing. And the blockchain is a fantastic idea to build such decentralized systems. Uh, so the blockchain project aims to address such issue by building blockchains for hardware, uh, not for cryptocurrencies, that they can trust each other without any trusted third parties. This can in increase the transaction rate uh, among many current blockchains for Bitcoin, the transaction rate is about 50 minutes or even longer. And for Ethereum, although the time is short, but it's still about 10 seconds. But for IoT, the transaction rate is about milliseconds. So blockchain uh, aims to address such issue as well. So how to build a dam distributed autonomous machines, the idea is simple. We remove the trusted third parties. So the data flow can safely sense through an untrusted channel. So which is called trustless communications. So that's the model, the flow chain model. The under layer is the trusted hardware. We can use uh, ARM trust room technologies or Intel uh, graphic processors. The Intel graphic processors is also used in hyperledger Sawtooth projects for secure consensus systems. And the middleware is the trustless communications. Uh, the trustless means the users of code the IoT nodes don't have to get PKI, the public key infrastructure. They don't have to use public key and private key to secure their communications. So I will show you the hybrid flow chain. It's a solution for IoT to trust this communication without PKI. A flow chain adopts the public blockchains together with private blockchains. So for private blockchains, only authenticated users can join the private blockchain network. But it's a model. Uh, the IoT nodes and IoT devices that execute the fraudulent application can be self-organized as a peer-to-peer -peer network in a ring approach by the famous P2P protocol called from MIT in uh, 21, I think. And you can see the architecture in the middle, the gray circle called hybrid node. The hybrid node is a device that receives the parcels from the public blockchain and deliver the parcels over the peer-to-peer -peer network to the private blockchain. So the parcel means the miner, so the hybrid uh, public blockchain, sorry, in the public blockchain, you can see parcel miners layer. 
The parcel miner is a computer that aims to generate such parallels and broadcast parallels to the private blockchain. So I'll explain the algorithm in a bit later. So in a <coughs> You know, uh, in a private blockchain, all blockchain nodes are running the blockchain framework. The architecture comprises of three, uh, yeah, three layers. The bottom layer is the WOT, and the middle is the broker, ser <coughs> broker server layer. <coughs> Sorry. Um. I don't want to explain the underlying layer, so I just put only one finger here for your interest. So the fraudulent adopts the WOT, way of things ontology, which provides a standardized model to represent a physical devices as an IoT application server, um, which runs on the devices. Also, the WOT surveillance, it's a combination of client and servers. So in short, this layer is and, uh, it's supporting the peer-to-peer -peer communications. <coughs> and why Fraudchain adopts the hybrid blockchain model? A hybrid blockchain system comprises of a public and private blockchains. One public blockchain with multiple private blockchain systems. Uh, it's because all messages can safely sense through an untrusted channels. Um, making leaks, leaks are uh, trustless systems. So for trust this system, it means that our ability to trust it uh, does not depend on the intentions of any particular parties. So here is the algorithm. Uh, I understand that it's not very easy to understand the algorithms, but I put a slice here for your interests and wish to get feedback from you. Maybe not today at this moment, maybe by emails. So the underlying layer of fraudulent use the code protocol to organize the devices in a ring topology. This topology is uh, to reduce the connections and reduce the cost of the bandwidth. So how transactions go to fraudulent network? Here is a very simple demo. So you can see there are four chunk data. Uh, chunk, chunk data means slice data. So like a live cam, a video, a video camera. There are around 30 frames uh, in a second. So the D1 means the first second, and D2 means the second frame. So uh, the first second is uh, computed as a data key, and the, peer, uh, the P2P network look up the data key in a DHT, the distributed hash table. So for, uh, for example, the code algorithm can look up uh, the success node to process are the chunk data. And then uh, generate the transition IDs. I don't want to uh, give uh, more explanation uh, uh, about the algorithm, but 
uh, there is a very important denied here uh, called the canonical code. Does anybody know about the uh, canonical code? Uh, the canonical code uh, is a magic string sent from the public blockchain to enable a fast authentication without PKI. So the um, system uh, is called pseudo authentication in a short. The distributed computing uses uh, the full authentication technique such as PKI to control access to the network. And most existing blockchains use such PKI to authenticate users, secure communications, verify transactions. However, as time consuming. So some studies uh, has finger that uh, there were several technologies can replace the PKI such as pseudo authentication. So fraudulent uh, use such uh, authentication techniques to authenticate uh, IoT nodes. So especially the IoT blockchain uh, need to authenticate nodes with uh, fast. And for Konami code, a uh, labeled as a uh, lambda here, it's a truly random string and can only use once. And it expires very soon, like the uh, the app is Google Authenticator. So you may have used this app uh, before. So the puzzle mind the miser in the public blockchain. Uh, basically, it's a schedule that uh, provide a time difficult uh, Konami code. So the IoT node uh, was assorted to submit transactions uh, by receive the Konami code and solve the puzzles. Uh, the puzzle is a string search problem. Now not a crypto or hash problem. So I mean that the algorithm can be executed in uh, IoT hardware devices, especially the con uh, resource constraint devices, uh, which with uh, limited memory and less computational power. Um, the 3D algorithm will be appear in main. Uh, you can download the full white paper at FlowTrain's website. And also, uh, it's an algorithm to submit a transition to a public network. Also can be found in the white paper at the website. Uh, so my time is uh, running out, so I want to give a recap and summary in the short. You can see in the table on the left side, it's the current trusted computing model. And at the right, it's a fortress idea. By using a trustless computing model, we can build an ecosystem of the then distributed autonomous machines. But the only problem there is that we have to use a trusted hardware. Uh, and currently, there, is, uh, there are only two technologies, uh, such as Intel processors and ARM trusted on IP. So the future project is that uh, things that come from Taiwan and the project was starting in Taiwan. We want to work with the hardware industries. Uh, in Taiwan or maybe in China. Uh, we are setting our office in China now uh, to build a truly uh, blockchain hardware chipset. Uh, so uh, that's all. You can 
But here is my contest. You can you can check out the Frochen a Frochen's website. The website is named Frochen Taxio. Frochen Taxio. It's very easy to uh, catch up. And if you have WeChat, uh, please add me to your contest by. Search